Welcome to part eight in the module on patterns and frameworks for concurrency and synchronization. In the previous parts of this module, we first described the active object pattern and illustrated how the ACE task framework can be used to implement this pattern. We then illustrated the application of ACE task and ACE acceptor connector and some other frameworks to implement a thread per connection version of our JAWS web server. We then describe the half sync, half async pattern that combines reactor and active object and illustrated a number of ACE frameworks that can be combined to implement this pattern and apply it in the context of JAWS to provide a more scalable solution. We then described the monitor object pattern, which was used to serialize access to a synchronized request queue in our half sync, half async solution, and also illustrated ways in which various synchronization patterns can be applied to monitor object and the ACE message queue to make it more pluggable, more scalable, easier to use in different contexts. What we're going to do now is turn our attention to one final concurrency pattern in this particular module, which relates to something called leader's follower, leader follower pattern. And this pattern is another way to be able to provide for pools of threads that access underlying event sources. If you went back and looked at the half sync, half async solution, even though we did a good job of addressing the limitations with a reactive approach, where there was only one thread of control, even though we did a good job of being able to be more effective in our use of resources than the thread per connection approach where we use with the active object, there still are potentially some problems, especially if you have requests that don't run for very long periods of time. And here's what some of the limitations are with half sync, half async. One of the problems is that because the thread that receives the incoming request is not the same thread that will process it, we have to end up using dynamic memory allocation, which incurs synchronization overhead and deals with, with uh, memory fragmentation and free lists and all those kinds of issues. Likewise, when we try to go ahead and NQ and DQ things onto our thread safe synchronized request queue, we're going to have to do synchronization operations. So we'll have to grab a lock, and that'll have some overhead. Likewise, when we try to move things between these threads, that will typically incur a context switch, which can take many, many low-level instruction operations in order to be run, and we'll deal with caches and other low-level hardware overheads. Another issue, speaking of low-level hardware overheads, has to do with the overhead of moving data, such as these request messages, between caches, between cores, between CPUs on a multi-CPU platform. And that all starts to add up as well. So even though half sync, half async has many positive qualities, for certain types of requests, it may be too much overhead. So what can we do to address this problem? What we're going to describe here is how to apply the leader followers pattern in order to be able to address this issue. Leader followers is a pattern that allows a pool of threads to efficiently and predictably take turns accessing a lower level set of event endpoints, things that you might have with, say, the select system call that we've talked about in the past or the poll system call. This particular pattern is structured in a couple of ways we're going to talk about here. Part of it looks an awful lot like the reactor. You've got a set of handles that you're going to walk and manage and, and interact with and monitor for different kinds of events from different sources of events. You've got a number of event handlers that you can use to dispatch when things happen on those sets of handles. There's also a set of concrete event handlers that you can inherit from the abstract event handlers to do application or service-specific processing logic. And all this sounds quite a bit like the reactor, of course. But the one thing that's different from the classic reactor pattern is the presence of a thread pool. So we can actually have a pool of threads that will call down into the, hands, the handle set in order to take turns accessing the source of events that that handle set encapsulates. If you take a look at this URL, you'll find a paper that describes other aspects of this pattern. Naturally, you can also read the corresponding chapter in the POSA 2 book for much, much more detail about how all this works. Let's now talk a bit about dynamics. At first glance, the dynamics here look a little daunting. But when we break it down, you'll see it's actually pretty straightforward. So here's what happens. You end up spawning a pool of threads, and they all attempt to become the leader thread. Only one thread at a time can become the leader. And the leader will sit there and wait for something to happen on the source of events, perhaps using select. And the other threads will then wait under, on some kind of synchronizer or queue as follower threads. 
when an event occurs, when an event arrives, the leader thread will take that request and go ahead and deal with it. It'll read it, it'll process it, and so on and so forth. But before it does that, it goes ahead and first promotes one of the follower threads to become a leader. And when the follower thread becomes a new leader, it will of course wait for the next set of events while the original leader thread morphs itself into a so-called processing thread to handle the request. And notice that the thread now that handles the request is the same thread that received the request. So we don't have those issues of dynamic memory allocation and not as much issues of synchronization and context switching and data movement as we had with half sync, half async. When the processing thread that was a leader thread finishes, it then typically turns around and goes back to being a new follower thread to wait for its turn to become the leader. Uh, in some implementations of this pattern, you'll see that threads that are done being processing threads actually become the new leader thread. And that's a way of trying to enhance cache affinity and thread affinity so you can keep things warmer and moving faster. Uh, this is also something that makes it a little bit more responsive and quite different from the types of things that humans would normally do where you would queue up in a queue and take turns in a FIFO order. You can do a LIFO style model with the leader followers pattern and things work quite fine because threads don't care the order in which they wait to do their work. They can all process things one at a time. Let's now talk about how we could apply this particular pattern to JAWS. What we can do is we can use a special framework that's part of ACE called the ACE thread pool reactor or ACE TP reactor. And this TP reactor is basically a reactor with a special property that a pool of threads can call its run event loop, its handle events method. And in that particular pool of threads, then it uses a leader followers pattern to have one thread at a time wait for work to do while the other threads queue up as followers. The nice thing about doing this particular approach is we can eliminate the need for the extra thread in the async layer we had with half sync, half async. We can also get rid of the synchronized message queue that we had in half sync, half async. So as a consequence, it will greatly reduce the amount of overhead and make the system more predictable. We're going to talk in a bit more, just a moment, about the benefits and limitations of leader followers. But I first want to talk about how, even though it will make the processing a little bit lower overhead, especially for small, short duration requests, you might still consider using half sync, half async for some environments, some contexts. In particular, half sync, half async does a few things in a little different way than leader followers, which may be beneficial. One thing that half sync, half async does is it allows you to be able to reorder and reprioritize incoming requests because they sit on a separate synchronized request queue. So you can deal with the requests by the importance of the clients, for example, as opposed to the order in which they arrive. Another benefit you get with half sync, half async is the ability to be able to dedicate user level virtual memory to queue up the requests. And you can allocate megabytes and gigabytes and so on of internal memory to queue these things up. In contrast, with leader followers, the queuing is typically done in the operating system protocol stack layer. And there's not nearly as much memory available there on a per connection basis. It's usually more like uh, 100k bytes or so before you end up filling up your window size. So an architect needs to know which of these approaches to apply and these patterns help you to navigate through the alternative design space as part of our pattern language. Let's now go and talk about the benefits and limitations of leader followers. Some of the benefits are we end up getting tremendous performance enhancements in certain areas. For example, having the one thread of control wait for work to do and then making sure that that thread is where the work is done can improve cache affinity for the thread, which means that you don't need to move things between the caches. It also means you don't have to even allocate memory dynamically oftentimes if you have a big enough buffer in the stack frame in which the request comes in. So that will improve and reduce certain sources of overhead that half sync, half async has to incur. Likewise, you can also minimize the amount of locking overhead and the need to be able to exchange data between threads because we're not moving data between threads. When the data comes in, it stays with the thread that originally detected it and is going to read it and process it in some subsequent way when it morphs from being a leader thread. So that can reduce the need for synchronization overhead. Likewise, you can also end up reducing the amount of priority inversion because we're not trying to queue things up 
in some uh, way that would end up incurring additional overhead. People oftentimes will actually allocate multiple pools of threads, each one running their own thread pool reactor at the appropriate priority level in order to be able to maximize the priority preservation in a real-time system. And another reason why this can be a beneficial uh, approach versus half, -sync, half async is that the amount of context switching is reduced for each event. We're not moving things around between the threads as much. So that's a win as well. Another nice thing is it makes it really easy to implement a thread pool using a reactive style of design. And the next part in this module will give you an illustration of how to do that with our JAWS web server. Naturally, of course, there are limitations. Uh, this particular pattern is very complicated to implement. We've implemented many variations of it in ACE over the years. And I think we've got all the bugs out, but it took us a while because there's subtleties. There's different variants of leader followers. There's a bound variant. There's an unbound variant that are described in the various papers. And it's important to understand these different variations to implement it effectively. And naturally, it also helps if you have a framework that does the work for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Another downside is it's a bit less flexible than half sync, half async. You can't easily discard the messages. You can't easily reprioritize them because there's no extra queue. There's no extra thread in which to do that. So that can be a little tricky. And of course, because we have one thread of control that's waiting at a time for incoming requests on a set of handles, that itself could become a bottleneck in a highly scalable systems. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to use leader followers in situations where I've got more real-time responsiveness, where predictability is more important than scalability. And I like to be able to use half sync, half async in situations with the reverse properties, where scalability is very important and predictability is a little bit less important. Next, we'll talk about how to illustrate this pattern being applied to JAWS.